All right, here we go. I'm gonna do a little video on uh, sharpening saws. I'm gonna try to always uh, share little tricks I do and just how I do it. I've learned this over the past 10 years. Volunteered with Eight Days of Hope for uh, about five years. And in the last five years, I've done my own uh, for hire business. Started off with a couple chainsaws. I post pictures of some of that stuff, some of the beginning stuff. But now I have almost all the pro saws and I love saws to be sharp. So I stop and take a lot of time to keep the saws sharp. 90% of the saws that I'm sharpening is because I let, you know, my employees run them and they get, they just, you know, get them in the rocks or dirt a little more. They do a lot of the more dirty stuff. So I can't blame them for that stuff. I send them to the hard stuff. So right now I'm just filing, filing down my depth gauges. For those that don't know, this controls how much material you take off. Take too much off, it's gonna to grab too much, but if you don't take enough off, it don't really eat. I'm kind of like uh, Tim does. He likes his to be filed down a hair. Just a hair more maybe than normal, I think I caught him saying. Here I'm just using a, a <clears throat> steel little three-in-one. I love these things. They make life easy. I can teach my guys how to use them. Um, you know, it takes a lot. I love just using a regular file, and then I use like a grinding wheel, like a hand, like a four inch grinder to take down my rakes uh, just a little more than, you know, normal. But even when I take them down, I run this sometimes, you know, the next time I sharpen it. And this shows me that I've not taken too much because that file is still taking a little off. But I don't feel like these take off quite as much. That little middle file takes off quite as much as what you want or what I want. Now, if you want your uh, saw to run a little safer, maybe not have so much kick, maybe not have so much bite, then maybe it, this thing might take off just the right amount. But I love these. My funny story, um, my mother-in-law's husband, or I don't know what you call that, was a stepfather-in-law, <laughs> old Bob, he uh, he had one of those files and I'm like, he don't know what he's talking about, that's for sissies. <laughs> you know, just being dumb and just you know not knowing no better. And I, cause I always use a round file and I used one wrong when I first started um, using a file. You know, I didn't kind of pull it up into that that top piece of chrome and get it just crisp. I was just trying to pull it up in the, you know, way deep in the tooth, I guess. But if it's not getting on that top, if you don't have one the right size and it's getting on that, you know, flaking up that top chrome, it ain't gonna cut. Um, but then of course you wanna keep the gullet clean, like, you know, underneath the tooth that keep that, I like to keep that cleaned out. I'll grab a file, a size smaller or a size bigger and keep it cleaned out, even if I'm just round uh, filing. So this chain is a semi chisel on a 36 inch bar on a 661. I forget what the, the name of the company is that makes that little twin port sticking out. You know, it looks like two little fingers sticking out. This thing screams. I've had this saw for a few years and it's a beast. I keep, typically keep a 42 inch bar on it, but I just get tired of that carrying around that 42 inch bar. And uh, so a 36 inch saw, you can cut through a almost seven foot piece of wood, or you know, solid six foot piece of wood. Um, you have to break out the 42 if it's something bigger, but most of the time a 36 is plenty. Um, the 42 is just overkill. Um, it's nice though sometimes to make one solid cut, you know, a butt cut or whatever, or cutting off a stump. It's nice to have a big um, saw, but at the same time, it's just so much to carry. I'm learning the older I get, the more I do this, that uh, I like a shorter bar. I don't need, I don't need a 36 inch bar, 42 inch bar, you know, 59 inch bar on every chainsaw. But when I first started, I was like, I want the biggest saws they make. So I've got 881 with 59. Uh, I keep a 36 inch on it. It screams, it's a bad saw. I've got it all West Coast customed out. <clears throat> I keep, and this has West Coast custom spikes. All my personal saws, I keep West Coast custom spikes and muffler bark box for the most part. Part. This 661 doesn't have a West Coast bark box on it. So this is, uh, like I said, a semi chisel. I don't love those chains, but I'm getting this thing just right. Like I just ran it. Like I run my saws for a few minutes, you know, just, you know, I'm getting it. If I get in a hair of a dirt or if it barely starts to slow down, I just freshen it up a little bit, takes a couple minutes and then it eats again. Um, but this saw stays sharp for about a whole 10 minutes. I sharpen it just right and I hand it to one of my new guys who's been running saws pretty good, who has experience and who's, uh, you know, got experience with saws and he goes to cut a big nasty cut for me and has a hard time with it and gets it in the dirt. But anyways, this is 
little video on how I sharpen saws. Hope y'all enjoy it.